My name is Chris Dixon. I uh, manage the tunnel project on behalf of Seattle Tunnel Partners. I grew up in a construction family, so I had the unique opportunity to work as a tunnel miner on my first job when I was 16 years old in Australia on a uh, tunnel project near Melbourne. Most of my career has been involved with uh, tunneling projects in the U.S. and around the world. The tunnel boring machine which we typically call a TBM, is stopped on Alaskan Way, about 1,000 feet north of the launch pit where it began its drive. We have about 8,000 feet to go. The first step in the TBM repair process is to construct access to the TBM. While we could access the TBM from inside the tunnel, everything that needs to be repaired is on the front of the TBM. So in order to provide better access and easier access to the portion of the TBM that needs to be repaired, we are constructing a TBM access shaft, which is 83 feet in diameter and 120 feet deep. Once the TBM access shaft is constructed and we've placed a concrete cradle in the bottom to receive the TBM, the TBM will mine forward approximately 45 feet and enter the shaft and the front end of the TBM where we need to do the repair work will be exposed in the bottom of the shaft. The front end of the TBM will be lifted out of the TBM access shaft using a modular lift tower. We have the ability to remove the cutter head and the cutter drive unit as one piece. But in order to lift those out, we're going to be disassembling the front part of the shield in three pieces, a left piece, a right piece, and an upper piece. The uh, whole lift is actually engineered to the last detail. When we lift the cutter head, it'll be in a vertical orientation, and it's almost the same height as the viaduct. Once we get the cutter head and the cutter drive unit that's attached to the cutter head to the surface, they'll be rotated horizontally and placed on the ground just south of the TBM access shaft. That whole component of the TBM will be approximately 30 feet high, or half as tall as the viaduct. So it's a very, very large piece of equipment sitting on the surface. At that point, we will begin the disassembly process for that part of the TBM. The disassembly involves taking apart the cutter head and the cutter drive unit, which sits immediately behind the cutter head, to expose other components of the TBM that need to be repaired or replaced. There's motors on the bearing block that need to be removed. They're, they're very, very heavy motors. They weigh 8,000 pounds each. We take the bearing block off of the back of the cutter head. The uh, bearing block's in two pieces. The next step is removing the inner cylinder assembly from inside the cutter head. And then we're to the point where we've exposed the main bearing and that can be removed. And we've also got the bearing block, which houses the outer seal ring. That's where the major part of the repairs is going to be done. And then we begin the reassembly. We have a spare brand new main bearing and we place that over the cutter head. We also extend the blades on the center agitator to more thoroughly mix the material in the plenum behind the cutter head. The bearing block with the new front portion of the bearing block is also assembled at the site. The new outer seal ring that was manufactured in Japan is then placed onto the cutter head. We replace the inner cylinder assembly with the extended mixing arms. Another thing that we're doing is we're adding additional steel plates to the various components to provide additional rigidity and strength. And then the last step is taking the bearing block and setting that on the cutter head. Then we reinstall the cutter drive motors that were removed when the cutter drive unit was brought to the surface. We are also adding some reinforcement in the form of these steel plates to the front shield pieces that we lifted out earlier, again, to provide additional rigidity for the TBM. While this work was going on at the surface, we were also installing repair parts or steel plates in the lower portion of the front body and also in the middle portion of the front body. 
When this work's complete, we're ready to lower the parts that have been assembled at the surface back into the shaft. Just the reverse of what we did originally, we raised the cutter head and the cutter drive unit. And then it is lowered into the shaft and set again on the lower part of that front body of the shield. Once that's in place, then we can come in and we replace the two side pieces and the top pieces on the front shield that encase that cutter drive unit that's located behind the cutter head. Once they're lowered back into the access shaft, then there's a period of time to reconnect all of that again to the TBM. While that work is going on, we're reconnecting all of the hoses, electrical cables, jacks, and other equipment in the TBM. When those are all reconnected, then we go through a testing and commissioning period, and then we will resume tunneling. The project's very, very important. We're going to complete the project. We're going to complete it successfully. The industry keeps moving forward with larger and larger tunnels. The tunneling industry is watching this project very closely. So everybody's doing their part to make all of this happen as quickly and safely as possible so that we can resume tunneling as soon as possible.